Alright guys, so if you've been watching my YouTube Animal Adventures channel, you know I have some snakes. I have big snakes, I have little snakes. In this room, I went through and I just counted them. I'm, I didn't even know how many snakes I have. And I actually have 85 snakes in this room. So, a lot of you guys are kind of, you know, doing the kind of the same thing. Keeping ball pythons, breeding them, or maybe thinking about getting into it. And in this episode, I want to give you one of the most powerful weapons in your arsenal as a ball python breeder. And that is the ball python genetic calculator. Okay, so I should give you a little bit of background on ball pythons, and especially if you're not used to snakes, and maybe you're just joining the channel and you're not familiar with all the snake genetics and why ball pythons are so popular and why a lot of people breed them. And let me tell you, it is completely different than any animal that you have ever seen on the planet, I dare say. As far as, especially for me, I've never seen anything like it. So, so if you, if you kind of compare it to a dog, <laughs> let's compare it to a dog. So, so let's say, for example, you have a Labrador and you have a Poodle and you cross them together and what do you get? When you, when you cross those two together, you get a hybrid, and it's a Labradoodle. <laughs> part Labrador and part Poodle. They call it a Labradoodle. And the thing is, is if you breed a Labradoodle to uh, another Labradoodle, say for example, uh, you'll never get back the Labrador or the Poodle. <laughs> you'll always have a mix. And especially if, if you have a really mixed... The, uh, you know, mixed breed dog, they kind of call them mutts because you don't really know what's in them. If you breed them, you'll never get out the pure dogs that they came from. All the babies will just be this kind of a blurred mix of all these different types of dogs. And, and the thing is, you really don't know the size or the temperament or uh, what kind of uh, behavior uh, the offspring will have. So, so say if you bred to a St. Bernard, it'd be a larger dog. If you bred to a pit bull, it might be a little more <laughs> aggressive, a little more defensive. So uh, in ball pythons, it's completely different. So say for example, if uh, relative to the ball python, if you had that mixed breed and you bred it to another mixed breed, uh, as far as a ball python, you would get you would actually have babies popping out that would be as an equivalent like a purebred St. Bernard and another baby would be a purebred Rhodesian Ridgeback or a purebred Poodle and you'd have all these purebreds popping out of this mixed breed and that's kind of what it is for ball pythons relative to the dog. So I think one of the things that makes ball pythons more popular than any other animal as far as breeding is that there are over 300 different single gene mutations out there. It's pretty amazing and, and I guess you have to wrap your head around some of them are recessive and some of them are dominant or co-dominant. So if you have a recessive, if they get one copy of the gene, you don't really know that they have the copy of the gene. So I, I kind of want to show you the genetic calculator and pretty much where everybody goes to, to, to look at the, the genetic calculator. It's online, it's in your browser, it's not software you have to install, you can go right online, right in Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use to access the internet and it's right on there uh, in your browser. Okay, so since this is kind of a study in genetics and I know genetics can get pretty complicated really fast and people can get pretty overwhelmed, I'm going to keep it really simple and I want to start initially just with the normal ball python. We, we call it a normal, it's the wild type ball python. And I actually have two right here. These are both females and you can see even between these guys there's a little bit of a difference between these normals. One has kind of uh, a little more highlights, I would say, a little bit different color. And this one's, I would say, this one over here is probably more typical of what you would see as a normal, but there's, you know, slight shades of different variations to normals. But if you breed a normal with a normal, you get all normals. It has no other genes, and this is like the base template. Okay, so for this, <laughs> I have my camera up on my tripod and uh, in front of my laptop, and I'm going to see how this comes out. Uh, it should come out pretty good here. I turned out the lights in the room, so you should be able to see it pretty good. <laughs> so, so you want to go to worldofballpythons.com, and this is the homepage. And from the homepage, uh, there's a little... Um, 
uh, right over here on the top right it says genetic wizard and you want to click on the genetic wizard and basically it's the, it's what they call the genetic calculator it's the genetic wizard on this site and so for down here uh, you enter in your male and your female and there's a whole bunch of different options you can just type in your genes and hit calculate and if you just leave them blank and you hit calculate what it does uh, if you actually scroll down a bit you'll see we're breeding a normal with a normal and here it gives you the percentage of what you can expect you'll get a hundred percent normals <laughs> which is which is kinda neat and then what you can do is you can actually click on where it says normal and it'll bring you to another page where people have uploaded different types of normals and you can see just kinda scrolling through let me scroll down just a little bit you can see that people have uploaded all these different <laughs> that was pretty neat different pictures of an of a different type of normal so that one that one's really interesting it almost looks like it has something in it but apparently it's it's a different type of a normal all right so this time i want to step it up a notch and i want to breed pastel to pinstripe and i have a couple examples here this is a pinstripe and say for example if I bred this pinstripe to a pastel and wanted to know what the possibilities were for the offspring I could plug that into the genetic calculator so let's plug it in and see what we get okay so we are back on our genetic calculator the genetic wizard and we're gonna type in pastel and over here pinstripe and then we're gonna hit calculate and we'll scroll down and we'll see the, there are the parents pastel and pinstripe and here are the results uh, you have 25% normal 25% pastel 25% pinstripe and 25% have one copy of each gene they call it a lemon blast otherwise known as a pastel pinstripe and if we click on the lemon blast link here we can actually come over here and see what that baby's going to look like with the pastel and pinstripe gene. And there's a whole bunch of different slight variations of a lemon blast. I have a few lemon blasts and they're all the same as far as the genetics but they look just a little bit different and I think it's because there are slight differences in different lines of the pastel. All right, now I really want to step it up a notch, and I want to show you something really advanced, and that is something I'm pairing up this year. Take a look at this. I'm actually crossing an albino pied with my clown. So the albino gene is pretty much all yellow. The pied it gives the splotches of white, and both of them are recessive. This says two, two copies of the albino, two copies of the pied gene, and this, this snake over here is a clown. It's recessive. It has two copies of the clown gene. And when you, let's plug those into the genetic calculator and see what we get from that combination. Okay, so we're back at the home page of the genetic calculator. And for the male, I want to select albino and pied. And for the female, clown. So it's an albino pied with a clown. I hit calculate. And let's see what we get from that. The, there's the parents <laughs> look familiar. They pretty much look like my snake. You know, the pied uh, has more or less uh, variations of white uh, splotches in there. And it's pretty much the same. And take a look at what we get. There's only one possibility. We get a triple head for albino, pied, and clown. So all the babies are actually going to look normal and they'll have one copy of each gene. Now this is where it really gets interesting. So what I'm really after is not those normal looking babies, it's the babies of the babies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and clear everything. I'm going to go back in here and type in het albino, het pine, and het clown. And over here the female that I'm going to type in the het albino, het pine, and het clown. So if we mix the babies together, the triple het babies, and we calculate, 
So take a look at this. So there's no picture because no one's actually posted a triple hit, but they both look completely normal. And here are the results. Take a look at what you can get from the results of this cross. Uh, it goes down, down, down. <laughs> you can get all these different crosses. And what you're actually getting is uh, 1 in 64 chance, <laughs> or 1.5625% chance you're going to get just a plain normal. Uh, 1 out of 32 are going to be het pied, 1 out of 32 het clown, 1 out of 32 het albino, 1 out of 64 you're going to get a visual pied. And a visual pied, if you're wondering what it looks like, it looks like the, pie, the albino pied without the albino. And the neat thing is you can go back and it keeps your spot, which is pretty neat on this spot, on this page. So, and, and, and kind of the neat thing is you're going to get albinos and clowns and pies and albino pies and albino clowns and <laughs> you're going to get albino pied clowns. You're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. And then, and then thrown in with all this, you're going to get the hats. So you get like het pied, het clown, and then you get the double hats, double het clown and pied, double het albino clown, double head, albino pied. <laughs> and what you're, you're going to see is, it, you're not, if it, unless it's an albino pied clown, you're not going to know for sure if it has the other, uh, if it's going to be het for anything else. So you, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, this kind of just shows you all your possibilities, which is pretty amazing. And some of these, like an albino clown, I've never actually seen one. So you can click on it here. And that is what an albino clown looks like. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Okay, so I have to admit that not many people are doing triple hats. And the thing I like, really like about it is when you're hatching out the eggs, uh, you get a whole rainbow of different colors. And it's kind of surprising uh, as far as what you're going to get. You're not really sure if you're going to get you know, an albino or a pied and a clown. And I think, you know, the albino pieds and, and clowns and pieds, they're in really high demand. And if you start mixing, you know, albino pied clowns and, you know, albino clowns, you get some really pretty high-end top-notch snakes that can sell for a lot of money with the current market today. And they're in high demand. And, and I think, you know, just the excitement of opening those eggs in the middle of the ball python breeding season would be pretty amazing. So actually, when I first started getting into ball pythons at the very beginning when I first started buying snakes I really spent a lot of time with that genetic calculator the genetic wizard on the world of ball pythons and I used that in conjunction with the available snakes on morph market and let me tell you I spent a lot of time plugging and chugging looking at all the the different combinations and it kind of gave me my direction as far as where I wanted to go. And, and a lot of times what I do is I kind of sit down in a spreadsheet and not only would I mix the, the different parents together, but I was also look at the return on investment for the babies and you know sometimes if you plug in you know if you were like for now if you were to plug in like sunset and a sunset of course you get all sunsets and it'd be really expensive but the thing is is you got to come up with the initial investment as well to buy into that project so you kind of have to work within the means of your budget and for me I decided you know to, to go with kind of a whole spectrum of snakes from a high-end snake all the way down to where I have a lot of normals. And as a matter of fact, this year I had a lot of normals and I thought, you know, maybe I should wholesale those normals. And I went to my first reptile show and sure enough, the first thing that was selling was my normals. And within two shows, all my normals were sold. It's a really big seller. So uh, don't underestimate the normals because a lot of people are looking for a first pet and an inexpensive snake. So that pretty much wraps up my discussion of the genetic calculator. And if you thinking about getting into ball pythons if you're doing some breeding or looking to invest in another project I would definitely go to world of ball pythons and use their genetic wizard and I'm not as affiliated with that website I'm not associated with them in any way but I know people have been using that particular website uh, for as far as I can remember at least 20 years it's been up and running and as a matter of fact they have pretty much the master list of all the different morphs and they list over 
300 and they kind of have a running list of all the different combinations and if you make something new like a world first well, most people will go to world of ball pythons and they'll post that and take credit for the, the world first on that particular combination so thanks for watching and i will see you next time